Hey y'all, how's it going? Welcome back to Sage Play Channel. My name is Brooke. Um, I actually took the day off work today. I planted out the fall garden. I just kind of like needed a day. So the other thing that I wanted to do today was clean the rest of the tomatoes out of my freezer um, because I planted the fall garden. I need to make room for other things, frozen green beans, frozen broccoli. Granted, those aren't still for a couple of months, but um, honestly, I'm sick of looking at the tomatoes. <laughs> in my freezer. So today I'm just making my basic tomato sauce. I didn't really make a basic like unflavored, no herbs, no nothing except for salt and lemon juice. I didn't really do that. I did it with a, a few jars, but really not that many. And um, maybe like a couple of weeks ago, um, Cam and I were looking at each other and figuring out what we wanted for dinner. And I actually happened to have all the stuff to make a bolognese. But the only reason I had all the stuff to make a bolognese was because I had plain tomato sauce and then I realized I didn't have that many jars of it so that's why I wanted to use the rest of the tomatoes in my freezer to make just a plain tomato sauce because it's really versatile I love having like a flavored tomato sauces that I can like incorporate into recipes really easy but for things that we want to take a little bit more time like a bolognese I needed to have something a little bit more versatile on hand so Step one is to weigh the tomatoes that we have left. I have no idea how many how many pounds they are. I was doing a really good job at the beginning of the summer about writing how many pounds they were on the bag. And then, you know, once you start getting to like 150, 180 tomatoes, um, pounds, you start losing track. So first things first, get them weighed. Do you want to guess how many pounds of tomatoes are sitting right here? 22. 22 pounds, you think? No, 18. 18 pounds, okay. That was almost four pounds, just that bag. Ooh, my, my guess is coming in good right now. So we're currently at 12 pounds. Now I would love to be around 15 pounds because that would make a really good batch. So let's see where we're at. And these are all different varieties. These are like Red Romas, the Alini Golds, like there are tons of different varieties in here because they were just kind of what was left. I think there's some Cherokee Purples, some Brad's Atomic Grape. So honestly, the sauce is probably going to be pretty incredible because of all the flavors. This is a pretty heavy bag. Let's see where we end up here. Okay, so this is like four and a half pounds. So let's call it 16 pounds. I'm gonna follow the recipe that calls for 15 pounds, and I'm gonna add a little bit extra lemon juice as a result. A couple different ways you can go about this. I froze these tomatoes, so as they've thawed, they've a lot of them have gotten pretty, pretty mushy. Um, you could go ahead when they're mushy like this and put them through your food mill, or what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to put them in the oven and let them get like a little bit roasted and then I will go ahead and put them through the food mill. The advantage to doing that is they're gonna release a bit of their water because really that takes the longest time when you're making tomato sauce is simmering it and simmering out all the water and concentrating the flavor. So that's why I like to go ahead and roast them in the oven for like only like 30 to 40 minutes um, at 350 and then go ahead and put them through my food mill and then get them onto the stove to kind of condense. So. I will meet you back here once these are all roasty toasty. Okay y'all, so we have the first pan of tomatoes out. Now, this is a food mill. You can do this by hand if you want. That's how I used to do it. I actually prefer to use the food mill because you get a lot finer of a sauce. So for the first pass of the food mill, I use the sieve that has the biggest holes um, to catch all of the skins. And then I'll go back through and run it through again with the smallest holes to catch all the seeds. Now, I've done it with just the smallest holes before and it seems to actually take longer. So that's why I like to do it this way. Getting the food mill has honestly been like a massive help. I'm actually looking at electric food mills to do for next time. So all you're gonna do is take your tomatoes and just fill up your food mill. So once you get it a little bit full, you're just going to rotate your food mill. And then what's gonna come out, you're gonna lose all your skins, which is what you want. And then what you're gonna get in the bottom is the pulp and the juice. Do this pan, but then the other two pans, this whole process kinda takes a long time, so. 
Okay, so now that we have done our first pass, I'm gonna pop the blade out. Probably shouldn't be touching this with my bare hands, but I'm too late. And I'm going to dump all of the skins into the compost, but before I do that, you always wanna check the bottom. There's always a bunch of tomato puree like stuck to the bottom that you wanna try and get off if you can. So you don't waste it. So tomato skins into the compost. Boop, boop. And then what we're gonna do is pop this, we're gonna pop this one out, set her aside. So we'll come back for her. And then we'll put the smaller sieve in. Okay, so then I have another bigger bowl. This is where all the tomato puree will end up. And I'm just gonna take the tomato puree from this bowl, dump it in here. A lot of it's gonna, especially a lot of the water is just gonna kind of fall through. And this process is gonna be way, way, way easier. We're gonna do the same thing just to pass everything through. And this time we're just trying to catch the seeds. And again, this, you can do this process however you want. This is what I found has been the easiest, is to go with the big sieve and then the smaller one, um, because when I was just using the smaller one, I found myself standing here doing this. I'm freaking ever. My shoulder workout the other day is not really appreciating this task. I'll tell you that much. So we'll do the same thing. We'll scrape the bottom here. Make sure that we got all the good stuff. And then the only thing you're left with inside your food mill are the seeds. And I start putting everything into my pot. So this is still going to be like a lot of, of water content, um, but that's when we're, we'll simmer it. And so I'm going to get the rest of these tomatoes food milled, food milled, milled, broken down, whatever. Um, and then we'll go from there. Okay y'all, so we got all the tomatoes processed and now we are just simmering down the sauce. I'm probably gonna wait till this reduces by mm, maybe like a third, maybe a half, nothing crazy. Um, we don't want like tomato paste. So this is probably gonna take like an hour. I will actually set a timer on my phone to remind myself to come stir it every 20 minutes. And then right before we start the canning process, we will add the lemon juice and the salt. <laughs> um, it is the next day. Uh, we're gonna finish the sauce today and I'm gonna turn the sauce back on and I'll tell you why this happened. <sighs> so my five year anniversary with my fiance was yesterday. We went out to dinner last night. We were gifted bottle of wine. I don't even want to hold it. Okay. It's a Herald. It's a 2012. It was delightful. It was a wonderful bottle of wine. I didn't have to drive. Are we starting to put these pieces together? So I didn't have time to finish canning the tomato sauce last night. Um, because I'm horrible at uh, time management when it comes to canning. Um, I had two whole glasses of this red wine and um, I feel like I'm gonna die. So we're gonna finish this tomato sauce with some hangover canning today. So I did leave the tomato sauce on the stove overnight. Um, some people are cool with this. One of those people is me. I feel good if I bring it back up to a simmer and I get it back up to a degree where no bacteria can form. Some people are not chill with it. Make your own life choices. So, we're gonna turn on the sauce, get it a little reduced. I need to eat some breakfast. I've had coffee and water. And I did have to walk my dogs. And now I need to eat something. So, I'll meet you back here when we're ready to start canning and hopefully I'm a better version of myself. Okay. <laughs> it's been an hour. The sauce is the texture I would like it to be, and you can skip ahead 30 to 60 seconds if you don't wanna hear my 
two glass of red wine hangover remedy, okay? Hear me out. Water, coffee, breakfast with protein and some kind of carb in that order, okay? Next, you're gonna take two Advil, okay? You're gonna make yourself an electrolyte drink. My preference is noon. You're going to drink the noon. While you're drinking the noon, you're gonna make yourself a smoothie to absorb all the vitamins that you've lost because you decided to have a second glass of wine and you're old now and you can't handle any alcohol, okay? After all of that, if you still have histamine problems because it's red wine, Flonase, okay? Then you're gonna give yourself a nice facial massage. You're gonna like massage all your facial muscles. You're gonna continue to drink that water. You're gonna get rehydrated, okay? I'm lacking Flonase, but that's the last piece of the puzzle I need to bring me back to life. Let's move on. So for our canning, I'm using the ball canning cookbook. I swear by this thing, it's my favorite. I've actually cracked the spine on the tomato sauce page of this cookbook. Um, so for the amount of tomatoes that we have, we need a third of a cup of bottled lemon juice. This is very important, okay? Bottled lemon juice is way more concentrated than like lemon juice that you're gonna squeeze out of just a lemon. This one is not necessarily my preference. Um, it is like organic, it's fancy, whatever. Um, it still works fine. I just tend to add a little bit more of it. Um, but then the stuff that I normally like to get is like that stuff in the green bottle. That's like real squeezed lemon juice. That stuff that you're like, that stuff. That's the stuff that I like to use. And then it's gonna have one tablespoon of salt. The salt is optional, the lemon juice is not. The lemon juice is what makes this shelf stable to can, okay? So I'm heating up my jars, right there. I'm heating up my jars in some water. Um, and then once I get those out, they'll be nice and sterilized. We will get them filled. Um, I put in the lemon juice and the salt at the last minute because I don't want the acidity from the lemon juice to like cook out. I don't even know if that's a thing that's possible to happen. It's just something I've always done. So I'm going to be okay. Okay, y'all, so I'm not, this says it's gonna make six pints, but I feel like I always end up with more. So we're gonna fill these, I think it's like a quarter inch or a half inch headspace. I also prefer to keep this base sauce um, a little bit looser because in theory, I'll be cooking it with like something else. Like for example, making the bolognese, you know, you reduce everything down and so I want just like a little bit of room left to further reduce. All right, that's good there. And this is the fun part where you get to touch the hot jars and not burn yourself. It's not that fun. We have started eating some of the jarred tomato sauce and uh, it's just so tasty every time. Doop, 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 doop. Does anybody else just like get the claw hand when you're doing this? Like you don't really know what this hand is doing, but it's just providing some level of support that no one understands. Cool, me too. So it looks like five's the magic number today. Okay, so the next thing is we need to wipe off rims. You always want to make sure you wipe off the rim just in case there's any kind of sauce that is left because that can impact your seal. I used to do this with vinegar. I don't really see that as advantageous um, quite as much as I used to, but if you wanna use vinegar, you certainly can. I also heat up my lids, so I went ahead and threw those in when I pulled the jars out, and they gonna be hot. So the biggest key I have found with canning is making sure everything is very hot and making sure everything is very clean. That's the other kind of big key that I've really noticed. I am typically not one to really follow recipes, <laughs> um, but you can't do that with canning. There was a couple, maybe like two years ago, in like 20, ooh, baby. In like 2021, I tried to like, I'd can for the first time 
and I totally failed and I literally captured on video when I realized that some of my jars were moldy because I didn't follow the directions. So always follow directions. Um, the risk for not following directions is you could give yourself or somebody else botulism, which is a brain eating toxin that they have no cure for. So be careful. The other thing that you can do, I always smell and taste everything that I jar and can to make sure that it doesn't smell or taste weird. You want to look at it to make sure there's no like fermentation bubbles. And then the other thing I always do is I pretty much, except for like jam, any kind of like sauce that I'm canning, I always heat up to a, a simmer. And that will get rid of a lot of any bacteria that has formed that has not made its way to mold or fermentation or weird smell or taste that will clear up any of that bacteria so that you feel really safe eating uh, home canned products. I also am not a big person on canning meats. You can definitely do it. Um, I just don't feel like it's necessary for my life. So we will get these into our pot of water. Generally, you do end up having to take some of the hot water out um, because of uh, water displacement. Yay, science. Yeah, we're gonna have to take some of that out. Um, just uh, try not to burn yourself, you know? So these will process for, I'm pretty sure, 35 minutes is what the recipe says. I'll also leave the link for this uh, recipe book that I use for all my canned stuff down below because um, I highly recommend you use a tested and verified recipe if you're gonna home can stuff. So this will go for 35 minutes and then we'll pull it out. While this is going, I would actually love to walk you guys through all the other tomato things that I canned this summer because it was such a hectic summer. It wasn't really something that I got to show you guys very often. So this is part of our pantry. This is where all the food is. The pantry in this house is massive. It literally keeps going, but it's the only storage that we have on the first floor. So um, when we saw this house before we bought it, literally I saw this pantry and I thought to myself, I know exactly what that's gonna look like. Like this. So up here we have like jams and I did do some canned peaches. I'm questioning if I would like to um, eat them or not, if I'm being honest. Um, but then here's all of our tomato products. So they are back here, they're right here, they're down here. I haven't counted them. Um, it seems like on like the social medias, that's like a thing that people do is they like count their jars, um, which is cool, I guess. I don't fully understand it, but that's fine. So what we have is, so we have quite a few Italian tomato sauces and this was one I made before I got the food mill and I was doing everything by hand. Let me tell you that food mill was a game changer in canning. So we have a lot of Italian tomato sauces like a marinara. Um, and then we have some of the plain tomato sauces, which is what we made together today. Um, this is probably one of my favorite things that I made. Um, this is pizza sauce. And uh, me and my fiance are known in our friend group and in our families for having pizza literally every Friday night. It's a thing. We don't do it every Friday night like we used to, um, but making our homemade pizza sauce was super fun. We, we've had it a couple of times and it's really, really good. Now, just a quick note about storing canned goods. A lot of people will store them with the rings off. I tend to like to store them with the rings on because I just like the way it looks. Um, the reason people store them with the rings off is because you can create a false seal. So if this seal pops for whatever reason, and then you have this screwed on really tight, you can create what's called a false seal and it's not actually sealed. So what I do is once the jars are cooled, I number one, take the ring off of every jar and I hold it like this to make sure that it's sealed. And then I put the ring back on, but I don't tighten it. So it's very like, it's very loosely on there. Um, so just a note, um, I know what the best practices are and I choose to do it my own way. So this is something else that I made a couple of years ago that's super tasty. This is curry tomato sauce and it has a bunch of fresh 
herbs and spices in it and we use this in the winter one of my favorite meals is making a um, red coconut curry and so the reason that this is a little bit more watery in texture is because curries are like really cooked down a lot with like vegetables and proteins and then you put coconut milk in it and you put it over rice and it is just like oh chef's kiss so good and then I really like to can stewed tomatoes in big quarts um, for like chilies or soups or anything like that and these were just like stewed tomatoes these weren't like halved these were just kind of like not really even broken down um and so i have some of these and then a couple of fun things that we did that we've never done before um is vodka sauce base so this has vodka and onions and tomatoes and then you add cream and parmesan cheese we have had one it's really good this recipe i either messed something up or i'm not really sure what happened but this recipe was supposed to make like six pints and it made like like three and it was it was really weird so um i do like this as an option uh but the recipe i gotta figure that part out down here we have more pints of just regular stewed tomatoes and then two kinds of tomato based salsa this is a salsa roja this is more like a picante it's real smoky and it's real real thick real heavy on the tomato like to the point where i think the next time i open one of these i might add more lime juice just to kind of like balance things out a bit and then this is a salsa ranchera so this is more of like your traditional salsa with like your onions your peppers your tomatoes all that good stuff and then the last one which regular viewers of this channel will recognize this is sunshine sauce so this is the sauce i grew alini gold tomatoes there were these beautiful golden tomatoes that are super sweet this is maybe my favorite sauce that we actually jarred um it has a bunch of herbs in it and it is just the flavor is so good it's really bright it's not super acidic it's a little sweet like ah uh, chef's kiss so tasty so the only two tomato products that are still in this house are this bag of um yellow pear uh i think white chardonnay any of my like yellow cherry tomatoes we literally couldn't eat them fast enough so i actually put them in the freezer so that we can make sauces and specifically if you guys saw that viral tiktok recipe a few years ago that was like a block of feta cheese with like herbs and then cherry tomatoes and you put it in the oven and you, you like roast it and then you like mix it all together and it makes a sauce and you add pasta we actually made that and we loved it so i think that's this is gonna work really really well for like those purposes and this is the last thing <laughs> of tomato product that's still in my house this is a block of like discard like cores and all of that good stuff and this is to make stock so when i make like beef stock or chicken stock i'll probably mostly do it with beef stock i will put a chunk of this in the pot with the stock to just kind of give it a little extra flavor it's a similar thing what you would do with like other aromatics like celery onion garlic bay leaf all that good stuff um so i will put a chunk of that in there I will probably mostly do that for when I'm making broth that's going to turn into soup um, because I like having a nice clear broth for making like rice and stuff like that. So that is uh, the rest of the tomatoes in this household right now. And so we will let these go and we'll come back when I pull them out of the water bath. Our sauce is out. It is beautiful. It's still a bit warm but all of the lids have pinged, um, which is a very good first sign that we are sealed. <laughs> There's a lot of other signs to look at. Once these get fully cooled, I tend to give them like at least 12 hours. So in the morning, I'll check to make sure they're all sealed, um, but they all look really good. They smell really good. So now we're about to impromptu host a bunch of friends to watch football. So <laughs> I gotta get focused on that, but thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you so much for being here. If you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button, join our community. We like to have a lot of fun here. Thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening, happy canning, happy cooking, happy doing whatever brings your soul joy. And we'll see you next time.